Hello, and welcome to our video tutorial on how to create a push from Titan Web. In this video, we will learn how to push data from a Titan Web project into Salesforce. I have got a sample project open. It's a blank canvas. I'm going to go ahead and add a form and some fields. We will make one column, four rows, and we'll add some input text fields here. I intend to connect this to an account, so just a couple of text fields will do, and then we'll add a button. We will call this account name, and account city. Let's call our button submit. To create the push, go to the gear icon on the left, go to the Salesforce menu, and this opens up the Salesforce integration window. We are going to create a push, because we're pushing data from a Titan web project into Salesforce. So, I'll go ahead and click Create New. From here, we want to select our object. I'm going to go select an account. Let's give it a description. This is not a required field, but it's useful when you get larger web projects where you'll have multiple gets and pushes. Your possible actions are create, update, find, and delete. Create is self-explanatory. It creates a new record. Update will search for an existing record and update it. If you choose update, you have the option. If an existing record, based on match criteria, is not found, you could create one. We're not going to do an update right now though. We are going to do a create. Find is similar to update only it doesn't change anything. It locates a record based on criteria and from there you can return values from that record into various elements in Titan. And then delete, which will delete records that meet the matching conditions. So we're just gonna stay with create. Bulk mode is something that you would use when you have a list of records to be inserted. We're not going to be using bulk mode right now since we're just going to create on record in Salesforce. So, I'm gonna come now to my mapping and I will map the two fields that I put on the form to their appropriate fields in Salesforce. And now we're going to go ahead and map the two fields that we created to where we want them to go on Salesforce. I called one account name. We will map that to the Salesforce field account name. Let's map city to billing city. Once your fields are mapped, you can configure any system messages. Typically, you're not going to want to change the settings that are on this particular screen, but you can, if needed, show error messages from Salesforce to users. Disabled form while saving is enabled by default. That means that when the data is getting pushed to Salesforce, the user will see a little spinner and the form will be disabled and they'll be temporarily blocked from doing anything. You may want to disable that from time to time in a certain projects. In this scenario, we are going to leave it enabled. With run criteria, you can set criteria under which this push will run. So if the push is invoked, criteria S we set here will be evaluated. Let's say account name equals ABC company. I'm not going to add this as a criteria, but if we were to put such a thing in here and invoke this push, then it would only run if the value entered in the account name field is equal to ABC company. But again, we're not going to do that today though. In the advanced menu, there are a number of different options that you may wish to enable from time to time, such as don't override if empty, meaning not to override a field if there is no data in it. Other options include field validation, ignore assignment rules, and enforce a captcha. We're not going to use any of these today, but just be aware that they're available to you. We're used as a useful tab. This is not currently invoked anywhere. It will be momentarily when we add it to a button action. But if you get a big web project and you're debugging something, you need to test some things and you don't remember where it's called, this is where you could see where this push is invoked. Alright. So I'm gonna apply this and I'll go ahead and close out of this window and hit save. And now we need to invoke that push from somewhere. Let's do it from behind the button. I'm gonna come to my button menu. 
open up the action menu and add a Salesforce action node. Let's select the push that I just created. We are not going to use return record ID to option right now, but if needed, you can grab the ID of the new record that gets created and then return it to a variable. I don't have a variable here because we're not going to do that for today's purposes, but in other use cases, you may find it necessary to create a record and then store its new ID in a variable for a reference elsewhere. I'm going to go ahead and click next. Let's give this a tag. Create new account. Apply this and save it. Now, let's go ahead and preview this project. Enter test new account in the city of London. When I click submit, you'll see the spinner run. And let's look and see what happened. If I come back into Titan Web, go to my gear, go to Salesforce, go to integration logs, and we can see that we created a new account record ID. If you click on that, it will take you to it in Salesforce. We have created test new account with a building address of London. And there you have it. That is how to set up and configure a Titan push to Salesforce.